welcome to the Finding Joy podcast. This is very exciting stuff. There are three of us involved with this podcast, and one of the main things we have in common is we all work at the Joy FM Georgia. I'm Jerry Williams, and I'm on the air every weekday from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. I'm Rob Langer, and I do the news just about every morning for the morning cruise. Also host some weekend shows, including the Joy FM's Top 12 at 12 on Sundays. And I am Benji Shepard, and I am on every afternoon, either with the JR Show during the week or on the weekends. It's just me from 3 to 7. What else do I do? You host do the windows. Local Artist Spotlight, yeah, too. Yeah, there you and, go. Yeah, That's we may tie thing. that in a little bit later on uh, with this podcast. Now, we realize that you may have found this podcast through a variety of different ways, and you maybe haven't even heard of the joy fm if you'd like to find out more about the joy fm or hopefully eventually you'll get to know us a little bit but you want to know a little bit more about any one of us there's information available on the radio station's website thejoyfm.com you click on georgia because we're a network across florida georgia and alabama click on georgia that will take you to our local website and then you can find out all about us that way if you look at the on air tab that's where you'll find out specifically more information about the finding joy podcast and if you listen to the joy fm or if you have listened long enough you know that We're more than music. We are a contemporary Christian music station, Mm -hmm. but we are so much more than just that. And that's what this, I think, is all about. That's right. And we're on a mission to find joy wherever we can, whether it's within the four walls of the Joy FM studio or going out and about all across our listening area. We like to say we're on a mission, and I always think of that, the Blues Brothers movie. We're (laughs) on a mission And we are on a mission from God, but our mission is to find joy wherever it may be, whether that's inside the radio station or out in the communities that we serve. And when we add the communities we serve with this podcast, that could be anywhere in the world. Yeah, Yeah. and it could be where we live. Like specifically this podcast today, we're going to go to my hometown of LaGrange, Georgia, and there is a hot dog and hamburger stand (laughs) that has been there for a long time. Charlie Josephs. Stephen Keith is the owner and operator of it. We're going to have a conversation with him, and uh, it's just going to be a great time of conversation and food. And joy. Yeah. That's right. There you yeah. Go. But before we do that, we thought that we would introduce you a little bit more in depth to Rob Langer. One of the things we find it if you're the kind of person who personalizes your office, chances are you're personalizing it with things that have brought you joy, either right, currently right. or through the years. And as you'll find out here in just a minute, Rob's got a lot to be joyful about. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> yeah, we've got a segment called What's on Your Wall that we're going to introduce to you for the first time. We may be visiting other people's walls at some point, but Rob is up first. I know that uh, you're listening to this right now, and you can't tell that Rob's got a lot of of stuff on his wall. It's like a museum in here. And it's it's quite organized. Yeah. It's a lot more organized than my office. <laughs> so kudos to that. Just knowing Rob, and if anyone has listened to Rob or listened to me and Rob talking on the air, you and Rob, you know that he's a big sports guy. Oh, yes. yeah. And, and all kinds of sports, particularly New York sports. That's right, yes. And, and a lot of this one wall, I guess when you walk in, it's the wall to the left. On the door, even, he's got a New York Mets banner. Right. Yeah. So aside from the calendar from 1991. Yes. And I'm sure there's some meaning there, and we'll yeah, get to we'll that. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Okay, yeah. There is, uh, and I guess, who is that? That's Building 429. Okay, and the Building yeah. 429 poster, poster that he stole from somewhere. <laughs> there is, there's baseball. Mostly Mets, although I do notice there's an Ebbets Field. Right. A, a salute to New York baseball. I was able to find this picture of Ebbets Field. I forgot. I think it was some um, antique place up in North Georgia of all places. That's beautiful, That too. one, and then the, there's another picture with the 1969 New York Mets world champions. The Miracle Mets. The Miracle Mets of 69. Well, why the Mets? Why are the Mets your team? Well, because growing up, my grandfather was an usher at both Shea Stadium and Yankee Stadium in New York for years. So we would go to a a lot of baseball games and you know he, we'd go see my grandfather and you'd pay like a 50 cents or a dollar for general admission tickets go see my grandfather he'd say okay yeah go see joe in uh, the box section down on the first base side so we'd go see him slip him a couple of bucks and next thing you know we're sitting third row 
Oh, wow. You know, I mean, yeah, if somebody ended up with tickets for those seats, we'd move. But still, this was the Mets back in the late 70s, early 80s when they were awful. Yeah. <laughs> so, Well, that doesn't explain why the Mets and not the Yankees. Well, I'm probably one of the odd New York baseball fans that roots for both teams. That the, is The odd. Mets more than the Yankees, but because my grandfather and I would sit and watch baseball games, we'd watch both teams talk about New York baseball, we'd go back to talking about the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants. So uh, my appreciation and love for New York baseball came from him. I just went to see more Mets games because it was a lot easier to get to Shea Stadium from where we lived on Long Island Uh. than go to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. But my all-time Baseball idol is Thurman Munson. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Catcher from the Yankees. Oh, of so, course. I have no know. idea who that is. Yeah. So. Yeah. Seventies <laughs> New York Yankees. So great story on Thurman, and he died in a plane crash. Oh. He became a pilot mm-hmm. because his family was from Ohio, from the, I think the Canton, Ohio yes, area. Yeah. Wow. And so he would fly home on off days, and got his pilot's license to be able to do that. Well, one day he was flying home on an off day, and his plane crashed, and he died. Oh. August second, nineteen seventy-nine. Yeah. Mid season. Yeah, wow. Very well. Mid season. Yeah. Speaking. Of plane crash. Not to make light of that right, story yeah, that you yeah. just told, Jerry, but this calendar that you were mentioning here, mm-hmm. it says Walk FM 97.5, and up there in a plane is an older picture of Rob Langer, but I, I think back then you were Bobby Knight. Bobby you? Knight, yes. Yeah. I was a traffic reporter for 10 years on Long Island, and well, we were the number one station on Long Island yep. at that time. We were big on traffic. We would do traffic reports 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we had an airborne team. I covered one county on Long Island, and my longtime on-air partner, Jim Buckley, covered the other county on Long Island. The traffic twins. The Skywalk traffic twins. Nice, nice. So I flew in a plane, and Jim was at that time flying in a helicopter. Well, uh, speaking of uh, of plane crash, too, now, <laughs> you, I, don't, I don't know if this was a plane crash, but at least an emergency landing. Was it a yes, crash, it, though? No, well... Uh, kind of. There was damage involved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. W- what happened was it was a cold January morning, and we were flying above one of the major highways there, and we lost our engine because there was water in the fuel line, and it, it froze up, cut off the fuel to the engine. Single engine? Single engine Cessna 152, for those of you that are, okay. are plane aficionados. What's going through your mind when that happens? Um a lot of bad words. Not I'm going to be honest, okay? <laughs> Being totally honest. But I had a pilot who was just amazing. He, he was calm. He's a military guy, mm. actually. So he, you know, knew what to do. We spotted a, a football field, and that's where we headed. At that time, we were fortunately talking to the control tower at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York. So. He said, this is where we are landing. Please send emergency vehicles as soon as possible. We came in from the north side, landed on the south 30-yard line, but the field was icy, so we didn't have much braking action. So it was either hit a scoreboard to the right, the goalposts, or hit hit a fence to the left. Yeah. So we ended up going wide left and hitting the fence. Hit the fence. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did, now, didn't you show me a video of news coverage of this? Yes, there is a video. Okay. Of, yes. So maybe we can put it on the website. Yeah, That's not great. a bad idea. Okay. Yeah, we will do that. I think yeah. we should. <laughs> I think we should. Me with kind of a mullet and, and an earring. Yes. <laughs> we definitely should in that case then. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's great. Well, there's too much other stuff in yeah. here to fit on the podcast, but uh, Rob, Thank you for letting us barge in. Yeah, Yeah, no problem. Maybe we'll come in and uh, cover the other stuff another day. For a future episode. Yeah, maybe so. What's on your wall, Rob Langer? (laughs) There was an awful lot of stuff on that (laughs) wall. (laughs) And, you know, we did find the video news coverage of Rob's emergency landing on that football field. We're going to share that with you on the website. We also have it on our YouTube channel, and I think we've got links to the YouTube channel and all our social media stuff there on the website as well. Right, yeah, we're on Facebook and Instagram, so make sure you follow us there. I do have to apologize about the quality because this was 1992 when it happened, so it was on VHS, and then it went from VHS to DVD. and The quality of that mullet did not. (laughs) It did come through. Yes, Yes. it did. There's no, no getting away from that. You know, while you're at our website, you can go to the Your Photos at the bottom. Recently, we did a thing that we call T-shirts for turkeys. 
which is part of the outreach of the Joy FM. As Benji mentioned earlier, we're more than just music. That's one of my favorite things that the Joy FM does every year. We set up for an entire week, usually outside of Chick-fil-A's, and we partner with local food banks and ministries. We have people bring turkeys, frozen turkeys or donations to buy turkeys, and in exchange we give them a Joy FM t-shirt. It was just a fabulous week. Yes, it was. Over 20,000 yeah. turkeys that were brought amazing. in, either in the form of a frozen turkey or a uh, donation to the food bank. So praise God for that. Absolutely. You know, and I just loved the heart of our Joy FM listening family, wanting to do something for people right in their community. That's what I get jazzed about every year. There was one woman that I was talking to Loves the station, loves T-shirts for turkeys, but because of her situation, she was not able to give. Mm -hmm. She wasn't able to help out in any way. She was going through divorce and and other financial problems. And this was the first year that she was able to do something. And I mean, I got to my stop and she, we were an hour before setup. And she was following me into the Chick-fil-A, <laughs> so excited to be able to finally do something That's and great. get her Joy FM t-shirt. She was just so jazzed about it. But so many stories yeah. that came out from that. So definitely check out those pictures at thejoyfm.com. Just go to the Georgia section of the site. So we are almost ready to go to Charlie Joseph's, which is that hot dog hamburger stand we told you about at the beginning of the podcast. Benji's hometown of LaGrange. We're going to get there in about 30 seconds. But first, we want to tell you a little bit about another podcast you can hear through the Joy FM. You can go on a mission trip without even crossing an ocean. Clarkson, Georgia is called the most culturally diverse square mile in the country. Hey, it's Jules. And on the next Jules Show podcast is Bill Johnson. Reach the nation's community church. We sing in three or four languages every Sunday. Our sermons are translated and um, potlucks are usually pretty interesting. Hear more about what God is doing and how you can be a part by going to thejoyfm.com slash Jules. It's around 10 a.m., and I'm waiting on Rob and Jerry to join me for an early lunch in my hometown of LaGrange, Georgia. For anyone who regularly listens to the Joy FM, you know that I make no secret about the fact that I'm from LaGrange. I'm proud of that fact. It's located between Atlanta and Columbus, a little closer to Columbus. It's got a population of around 30,000 people. Not the biggest city that our radio station serves, but it's my home, and I love it. I'm standing on Bull Street right outside of Charlie Joseph's, a hot dog and hamburger stand that's been in this town my whole life, and for the lives of three generations before me. As a matter of fact, Charlie Joseph's will celebrate 100 years of being in business in 2020. It's one of the many reasons I'm proud of my hometown, and somehow... Jerry and Rob have never had a meal here. We're about to remedy that situation. Well, it took you long enough. Rob had to finish some stuff up on the top 12 and 12 before we left. Ah. Yes. So make sure you listen every Sunday at noon. (laughs) Ah, well, welcome to the big city, guys. Beautiful. You guys have a good drive in? It was good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is it. Look at that. Founded 1920. I you love see it. that. I love that. Isn't That's... that great? <laughs> I found them. You think they uh, they like Coke or Pepsi here? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. One Pepsi product in the whole building. Oh, yeah? One Pepsi product. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's fun, so you can figure it out. <laughs> this is uh, Jerry Williams, Jerry Williams with the camera. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Hey, Glenn Lopez. Rob Langer, nice Rob to meet Langer, you. Rob Langer, Glenn Lopez, nice to meet you. Guys, let me introduce you to my friend, Stephen Keith, the owner, proprietor. Hey, Stephen, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Doing good. Good to see you all. Same here. So you got any Coke products here? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I spy red. Yeah. <laughs> 15 cent hot dogs. That's the old price. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank 
you. You got Thank it. You. you got it. All right. Was 15 cents the original price of the hot dogs back in the day? They were a nickel, know? from what I hear. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> <laughs> 1920. My great grandfather. Yep. That's amazing. Really? Yep. Was, it, was it in this building, or did it start in a different building? It was on Main Street, uh, the next street over. And they moved here in 46. That's a run. Yes. That is, that's sure quite is. a run. Yep. So, did you guys know what you want to eat yet, or what? Clifford's got the egg and the hamburger patty. And, and, cheese. and cheese. What kind of cheese? American cheese. Okay. Yep. Fried or scrambled? I'm going to go with the fried. I, I'm, fried. Yeah. All right, guys. I'll be right back. Stephen earlier was showing me this bottle. You see the one in the middle, the, right above okay, all yeah, the that oh, okay. yes. drinks. Okay. That was uh, given to him by the pastor at First Baptist Church on the square at the time, right? Okay. Paul Baxter. Yep. Where's that from? River Jordan. Really? Wow. wow. Have you filled it with water, or, or that's is the that actual what, water that's, from? The, oh, that's right. water from. That's oh, right. okay. He did yes. some baptism. Okay, all right. I was thought maybe their Coca Cola was sans color. <laughs> 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 For some reason, that's, that's or, or, what happens or, to or it over the miraculously years. Miraculously, they changed the Coca Cola into water. <laughs> It'd be like a Jesus reverse. Yeah, miracle. right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Reverse. <laughs> Look, and you got people walking up on the street. That's that's what I think is the coolest thing. Yeah. yeah. Then you just that's walk our up. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. That's the walk up. There's uh, the here's steamer. Something you hear the steamer? That's go. it. Good morning. <laughs> hey, did you see that one sign over there? Which one? Which so many? <laughs> I got here. Just, just got my attention. Can you be a little more specific? The, beware of wife. <laughs> That's it. You see oh, it? oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see it now. Short order awesome. cook is also short temper. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on these walls. Yeah. We couldn't do a what's on your wall in here. It'd take us forever. Oh, no. seriously, man. That's a mini series to do a what's on your wall in here. It's like a well oiled machine over here. Yes. Yeah, you ought to see it when the lunch rush hits. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure, oh, man, yeah. It's crazy, but they, they handle it. They fill up every seat in this place, and they handle it, man. It's amazing. Clifford special with salt only. Which one? Ah, oh, there you go. Thank you. Oh, oh my word. That looks good. You got Smells the Clifford like special, delicious. Rob? Yes. Clifford yes. special salt and pepper. That would That's be me. Be. Thank you so much. Steven. <laughs> That's mine. Thank you so much. Steven, I thought your name was Benji. Nah, it's the Steven special. Dig in, fellas. Let's yeah, try right. it out. Mm. Oh, man. Whoa. Oh, very good. Thank right. you, sir. You're welcome. Mm. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that I'm telling you, man, something happens in that steamer. Yeah, <laughs> there was something special. <laughs> That's where it comes alive. Mm -hmm. So you guys got the Clifford. There's a story behind the Clifford special, and his picture is on the wall yeah. for everybody to see. And yeah. I remember seeing Clifford. Yeah, here. he worked here for 45 years. Yeah. He was special. Uh, he meant a lot to my family and to a lot of the people in the community. Um, he was awesome. He passed away with cancer. That's been a few years back. That's been back in 98. Yeah. yeah, so you talk about a legacy, man. That's 21 years ago, and yeah. uh, people still order that Clifford special and are still enjoying it. It was a big part of what we do. That's yeah. one of the things that I have noticed about Charlie Josephs over the years coming here is that you're going to see the same people working oh, here. There mu must be something going on to, uh, you know. God has sent me some special people. I well, couldn't do it without them. Well, I mean, it, it says something to you and your family, too, for you know for treating folks right. Because if you're not treated right, you're not going to stick gonna around. Stay. Right. You know? I mean, I've got a cousin that worked for you for number of years billy skipper oh yeah worked, oh yeah uh, i went to school with billy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i went went to school with steven too yeah oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay we didn't hang out steven was a lot cooler than i was <laughs> oh come on now come on now you're in the smart classes <laughs> <laughs> well hence the cooler uh, right yeah i was kind of a kind of a homebody though yeah, were you? I don't know. I think I was just scared of everybody. <laughs> you know, I didn't. You were doing your lessons, and I was learning my <laughs> lessons. <laughs> Stephen, you were saying 
your uh, great grandfather was, and he was Charlie Joseph. That was his name. Yeah. Wow. And then my great uncle brought it over here. Charlie actually never got to this location. Okay. Um, and then my great uncle, he ran it from '46 to '85, and then my dad took over. Your so dad's I'm Joey. Four, yes. My yeah. dad's Joey. So you took over about six years ago. I started working here in '85 when my dad took over. Hmm. That was 30, 34 years mm. ago. How in the world? That's all I know. How in the world is 34 years back? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Rob didn't was, waste any time. No, no, that was so good. Yeah. That was so yeah. good. This is great. Yeah, I still got a little left. Well, you can barely hear it because I asked him to turn it down, so, and I'm hard. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm so sorry that I, I did, it. but the, the yeah. Joy FM is playing in here. It, it actually, you can hear it when you're walking up. Oh, really? There's, there's okay. speakers uh, outside, too. That's right. Has the Joy FM always played here? Uh, about 15 years ago, uh -huh. um, I got out of drug rehab, and I decided that my life was going to be different, and that this was my last chance. Mm -hmm. um, and when I came back home, we changed the radio station. I knew I needed all the help I could get yeah. uh, being back home, and that's who I wanted to be. So... It started out for me, uh, and I didn't know if anybody was going to like it and what the response was going to be. Right. Um, but it gave me strength every day, and it still does. Mm. Um, so obviously Christ has made a big difference in your life. Oh, I wouldn't be here without Christ. Mm. Uh, this, this restaurant wouldn't be here. Um, and that's really the main thing about what we do is we try to make a difference in somebody's life every day. If all I could do is sell hot dogs and hamburgers, I'd give up. But if I can make the difference in somebody's life um, when they come in here, because I don't know where they came from. I don't know what they had going on. Um, but if I can help somebody be free and laugh and smile and, and feel comfortable mm. um, to be a part of, to be remembered, uh, to feel special, noticed, that's what I want to be a part of. Um, I, and I've noticed that over the years that when you walk in, even in the mid, and because I'm normally coming in when they're just like slammed with business, you know, every seat in this place filled up. But, you know, the culture you've created here behind that counter and that little space that you guys work in, you know, you got folks that that come up with a smile and they're calm even in the midst of that storm going on all around them and I gotta I gotta think that you've set that example just to brag on you so good job thank you yeah. so much yeah man alright I gotta get back to more of this <laughs> <laughs> so Stephen what is the story behind getting a name the sandwich the Clifford special and the Stephen special <laughs> yeah how, how does that happen <laughs> When I was a kid, there were a few customers that would come in and they would they would holler across the restaurant, "Hey Clifford, give me that special." Uh huh. And it just so happened it was an egg, cheese, and hamburger patty. So that's what we started calling it. Hmm. And over the years, that's all we had was a Clifford special. And when I was a kid, I asked my dad. I said, "Why does he get to put his name on the menu and I don't?" <laughs> So he's like, okay, son, whatever. So you come up with something, and, and we'll put it up there. So he uh, finally did. So that's where the Stephen special came from. Now, you here every day you're open? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I have all my life. I ate it before I started working here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we had for dinner was hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah, yeah. And I just discovered not that long ago that they had breakfast here. And you guys have probably been serving breakfast for a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just yeah. always knew it as a place that serves lunch. And, um, yeah, so they got good, breakfast, good coffee, too. Good old Maxwell <laughs> House, man. <laughs> And they've got another location, too, that has not been around nearly as long, but it's pretty established. What, about 20 years? It's like 93. Yeah, so yeah. that's almost 30 years. My so. dad, my brother, my mom, they all work there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Now, where's the picture of Clifford? That That's right over there. Below the, the Mona Lisa? The black and white. Below, okay, the black. Okay. Below, below the, the beware, beware, of beware of wife sign. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> I was going to make sure I get a little bit of Clifford so when we were talking about the special. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed. I never noticed coming in. It's just one of these subtle things that unless you're looking for it, you might not. 
Stephen pointed it out to me earlier. Right out front, there is a cross that uh, you were telling me you used to put it up at Christmas time? Yeah, we used to put it up at only, Christmas time, and we Christmas. would take it down. Mm-hmm. And, and then over the years, I started thinking, like, we would start saying Merry Christmas December 1st. And people would like, well, Christmas is, you know, however many days away. Christmas is next week. Christmas is three weeks away. And I'm like, you can celebrate God's love for us today. Mm. You don't have to wait until the end of December to celebrate Christmas. Right. Um, And that's that's also a part of why I think we're still here. Yeah. Because we celebrate each other, our love for, for God and what he's done for us. And. And when we struggle, we, we struggle through it together. Mm. Um, that's a lot of what happens in here. It's not just hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah. I should leave this recorder with Stephen today because it's October 31st, and if he tells everybody <laughs> Merry Christmas today, yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear some reactions. It's also, it's also the day after the World Series. Yeah. Oh, right. right. Yep. Which in my house means we start playing Christmas music. <laughs> Because there's only two seasons, baseball and Christmas. There you go. There you go. <laughs> What's the busiest time for you here? I it's guess on the way. It's on the way. Okay. You can, you can feel it coming, yeah, huh? Close. Yeah. It's going on 11 o'clock. Yeah, there. coming up on 11. So. Right. roll up to the window a little bit more. For sure. Sure yeah. How are you doing? Hey, it's good to see you, man. I didn't even recognize you there for a second. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just working over here. Oh. Oh, let me go. Let me go say hello to her real quick. I'll be right back, y'all. So you guys have regulars, I guess, who are here like every day or every Tuesday or whatever. Every day, every Tuesday. Every Do they Thursday. they all get the same thing every time or? Just about. Uh-huh. Really. Some of them can just about get their food by the time they hit their seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I see them coming in, I'll go ahead and make it. Right oh, that's too funny. <laughs> yeah. That's too funny. And do you have people that sit in their regular spot every, you know? They like their regular spot, yeah. and if somebody's sitting there, they get in the death stare. They'll leave, and if that person moves while they're eating, they'll move to their spot. That's great. That's great. I had to go out and... Uh, Say hello to my old babysitter, man. That's, <laughs> old, that's, that's what happens. You know you've been in. You Be- know you've Becky been in town for a long time. <laughs> yeah. When your babysitter rolls up on you, yeah, yeah. That oh, wow. tells people I used to change his diapers. Uh-huh. <laughs> people do Stephen like that all the time. Yeah, they usually do it with a store full of people, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, I. I, I may be remembering this wrong, but you can confirm for me because I was just thinking about back in the day, like high school, maybe middle school, because Rob Langer, we were recording this thing called What's on Your Wall, and, and he was talking about this video, which, by the way, you can go online, thejoyfm.com, and see this video <laughs> of his hairstyle <laughs> back in the 90s. Oh, wow. And he was sporting the mullet oh, back yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> Steven, you had the mullet back in the day, didn't oh, you? Yeah, lightning yeah. bolts I knew it. on the side. <laughs> I knew it. I little thought I remember in the that. very back. Oh, and, man, that's oh cool. yeah. man, little. Feathered up on the side. Yes, that's the way to do it, man. Yeah, the girls loved it back then. Not so much now. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Not so much now. That's I'm cool. just glad at this age I I could grow one if I wanted to still. I can yeah. have the hair, so I'm thankful for that. Yes, yes. Be thankful that you can still, still make, the, an option. make yes. the party happen in the back if That's you need right. to. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Steven, this has been great, man. I know you're about to get busy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's so good to know you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for all y'all do. Before I go, are you guys going to do anything special next year? Because... Guys, 100 years. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. right. 100 yeah. years. We're still working it out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're definitely now, look, will. they do block parties all the time <laughs> right. in downtown LaGrange. I think there needs to be a block party celebrating Charlie Joseph's on the city's dime, personally. That's my opinion. <laughs> Let's do a splost movement for this or something <laughs> right. to pay for it. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to celebrate the whole year. Do there it. You go. That's do great. It. Now, do you know the exact date when the first restaurant first opened? It's funny you The say first that. hot dog was steamed. My dad <laughs> called me one day, and he said, go down to the corner of the restaurant, look on the side wall. 
It's written in pencil. Tell me what it says. I said, Daddy, I repainted that years ago. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we think it's June 20th. So celebrate the entire month of June. That's That's there, celebrate yeah. the That's whole right. year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You only turn 100 once, man. Know, you celebrate right. all year. <laughs> yeah. Well, we will say happy birthday and Merry Christmas and That's right. <laughs> all the That's good right. stuff of yeah. don't before. Have to wait. That's right. <laughs> Thanks for having us here, man. Thank, Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Thank appreciate you. so much. It's a pleasure to get to meet you. Thank you. Well, guys, I'm glad that you got to experience a little slice of my hometown of LaGrange. It and was Charlie great. Joseph. It was very oh, good. Oh, man. And it now, was a great experience just hanging out in the restaurant, too. It was absolutely. wonderful. Absolutely. Well, you didn't get to experience everything. Let me tell you, next time you go, okay. and I'm hoping you're going to oh, well, have a next time. Oh, no, yeah, sure. there will be. Well, you got to have the hot dog or the hamburger. I know Jerry's very particular about where he has a hot dog, but you got to at least try a hot dog okay. at Charlie Joseph's mm-hmm. and a hamburger mm-hmm. with the regular hamburger bun. And a lemon sour. Have you guys ever had a lemon, lemon sour? No. no. I actually had okay. a friend of mine say something about that. You've got to go the next time and try the lemon sour. So that's what is a the lemon list. sour. Like Everybody lemonade? does it a little differently. You got the club soda and a lot of lemon and salt in there too, Ooh. and oh. it's it's nice and lemony and soury. So you you just Ooh. need to experience. Okay, it. yeah. And the other location that we mentioned was on West Point Road in Lagrange. You know, I, I was thinking a lot about our time there at Charlie Josephs and, and with Stephen, and and even our time in your office. Mm-hmm. Reminded me of a story that I don't think I've shared with either one of you guys. It just happened a couple of weeks ago. My son Caleb lives out of state now, lives up in the Wheeling, West Virginia area. And he's got three boys, Toby, Travis, and Trenton, 15, 11, and 5. And they had been visiting some friends in Pennsylvania. They were about an hour from home. Got back on the interstate to start coming home, and it had a flat tire. Pulled off the side of the road. Caleb went and opened up the trunk. He's got a spare. No jack, no lug wrench. Ouch. Oh. Sitting there, side of the road, on the interstate. And Caleb got back in the car, and he's... Slams the doors. Oh, what else could go wrong? And Trenton, the five-year-old, just looks at him and says, well, Dad, why don't we just pray and ask God to help us? Five years old. They hadn't even said amen. And the Pennsylvania Highway, whatever their hero-type unit is, one of them pulled up behind him and ascertained what was going on said, we'll, we'll get you a tow truck. There's a big accident up the road, so it might take an hour. So, so they went in and they got something to eat. By the time they came back out, the guy was out there changing the tire hmm. on wow. his car. Five years old. Wow. Kid said that. Well, he got that from his dad, who makes sure that he prays with those boys every night before they go to bed. And Caleb got that from me. And of course, I got that from my mom and my dad. And my dad got that from his mom and, and his aunt, That sort of leaped out at me as kind of a theme of what we heard from both Rob and Stephen about where their faith comes from and their their heritage, the things that had been passed down. When Rob talked about his grandfather Mm -hmm. working at Shea Stadium and at Yankee Stadium and getting them into the good seats when that was possible, and how Rob learned his love for baseball from sitting around with his grandfather, watching TV and watching the games on TV and talking about it and going over the box stores. And, of course, Stephen at Charlie Joseph's talking about his uncle and his dad who had run the store and his grandfather who had started the store and and all that heritage there and and how he exemplifies that sort of servant leadership by working right there every day in that store with those guys. Mm -hmm. That's a very biblical principle of faith and a legacy of faith and that being passed down from generation to generation. And it made me think of Timothy, who in the New Testament worked with Paul a great deal. One of, if not Paul's final letter that he wrote, he wrote from jail in Rome to the young pastor Timothy, who he had left and was supposed to come back to see, but because he was arrested and imprisoned in Rome, he couldn't. And, and Paul writes to him, To Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God who I serve with a clear conscience the way my forefathers did, as I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day, longing to see you even as I recall your tears so that I may be filled with joy. Mm. And he takes great joy in that legacy and in, in sharing that with Timothy. He says, For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that it is in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, 
but of power and love and discipline. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. And so there is that importance of that legacy of faith being passed down. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a couple of great examples of that in this episode of the podcast with Stephen from Charlie Joseph and with Rob and his granddad Mm -hmm. and his love for baseball and the joy that they take. You just tell when they talk about those people who were pivotal in their becoming who they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That there is a great joy as they relish those memories. That's yeah. great to recognize that. Well, I think that we should continue this quest, fellas. Yes. To keep yes. finding joy. And one of the most joyful people that we know, we're going to have her on <laughs> our next podcast. We go to Athens next and visit. Athens, Georgia. With yes. Jules. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to Greece. No, that's oh. That's unfortunate. Well, no. <laughs> we got we to increase the budget. The budget. Right. Maybe we get a little budget bump. Athens, Georgia first. Here's a little sample of what you're going to get in Athens on the next Finding Joy podcast. All right, so here is the bell. This is what you ring when we win. Or, you know. Just whenever you feel optimistic. like it, Optimistic. Huh? All right, Jules. So How there's about a it? height requirement on this. Okay. okay. Yeah. Go for it, Jules. Okay, so short people can't reach it. You got it. Oh, do you have to do two hands? Hey! It's all about the momentum. That's wild. There it is. Whee! Everyone's like in class right now. <laughs> Especially this classroom right yeah. over here. <laughs> My board. bad. <laughs> nice going, Quasimodo. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot wait. Two weeks from today, make sure that you have subscribed to the Finding Joy podcast. And also, you know what helps us is a review and a five-star rating, right? Yeah, that's right. However you found us, because we're on Apple and Google and Stitcher and and, Spotify. Spotify. Those five-star ratings really help people find us. So uh, make sure you do that. And if you got less than a five-star rating... Well, don't do that so uh, quickly and maybe (laughs) email us, findingjoypodcast at thejoyfm.com. And don't forget, you can also go to thejoyfm.com and on the Finding Joy podcast page, we've got bonus material there where you'll get to see pictures of stuff from my office and actual (laughs) video of the news footage of when I had that emergency landing. And the infamous mullet. Yeah, the infamous mullet. It is front and center. It's proud and loud, buddy. (laughs) I mentioned that email address too, findingjoypodcast at thejoyfm.com. If you have any suggestions for us for a future podcast Mm -hmm. subject, somebody that you think would be a great fit for the Finding Joy podcast, email us. Next episode of the Finding Joy podcast drops on December the 5th. That's a Thursday. Of course, if you subscribe, it'll just show up magically in your feed.